Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about Air of Fire by Sarah J. Moss, and oh my god, guys, this book was awesome! When I first picked this book up from the bookstore, I was extremely intimidated by the length. So, unfortunately, there is not much I can say without going into spoilers, because this is the third book in a series, so spoilers will happen, of course, at this point in the game. So, if you have not picked this book up yet, go do it now. If you haven't picked up the Thunder Glass series and all yet, if you love fantasy, do it, because it is just amazing. So, yeah. With that, I'm going to go into my spoilery bit, so goodbye non-spoilery people. Come back after you read the book. Go read the book now. Just go. So, like the other books, we're following several different points of view, and we are introduced to a few new characters in this book. There is... First, there is Manon, who is a witch. She is one of the Iron Teeth witches, and she is from the Blackbeak clan. There's, like, three different clans, and... She is the heir to her clan, so she's kind of important. And I like how we do get more of the witches in this book. They were mentioned in the other two books. We even have one witch, um, Baba Yellowlegs, in, I believe it was the last book. Yes, it was the last book. And I like how they are brought in more. And apparently the king is trying to get more people on his side, building this huge army, and he makes deal with the witches. They cannot fly anymore because magic was taken from the realm, so, you know, they can't really fly. I'm totally going to butcher this na name, too. Um, he gives, he promises to give them revens, which are basically kind of like dragons, but different. There's some differences. And if they, you know, promise to serve him. And with these creatures, they can go back and try and take back their previous lands. So, the three witch clans, you know, totally agree with this. So, they're, for her part of the story, they are training, they are learning how to ride these creatures and forming bonds with their cho chosen mounts. I like the twist that involved her story. She wanted this one Revan, who is like this big bad brute, named Titus. And, you know, he seemed to be the best out of all the male Revens. But, in the end, that Revan is totally just killed by this little bait beast. This little run. But that little thing, he is a freaking warrior. He totally took down Titus. And Manon chooses him. So, for a good part of her story, she is trying to get over the little handicaps that come up with cho choosing him. Her grandmother is not too happy about her choosing this little baby. So she's trying to get the little guy strong and toughened up and prove everyone that they are wrong and she made the right choice. Throughout her story she seems to have gotten a little more heart to her. She seems like less harsh than she was earlier on and I'm curious to see how that's grows and changes or keeps developing down the line in the other books. You know, curious to see whether she stays on the king side or if she goes over to maybe help the rebels, maybe? That would be kind of cool. Because, you know, it's the king's fault that they don't have magic now. So I can kind of see them, you know, turning against him, which would be kind of awesome. But we will see. Then there's Adian who is kind of Selena's cousin, and for all intents and purposes, it seems like he has gone over to the king's side completely. He's gone dark side, he's just, he seems like this giant asshole. Like, for the first few times you've seen him in the book, this book, I wanted to freaking punch him out. I was going along with this act of his for a while. But we find out that he is actually part of this rebel group that is trying to take down the king. But he goes along pretending that he's this loyal little lapdog, because that's the safest route to go at this point. You know, to stay alive and to, you know, have a chance to actually make the difference that he wants to make. And Kale actually finds out that Adian 
isn't the devoted servant that he pretends to be. That he lets us know his cousin Aelin is alive, aka Selena, which we found out in the last book, which is... I'm still just blown away by that. And I think it's awesome. So him having actual proof that his cousin is alive, just... I want to give him a huge hug because he seems so freaking happy. And he is so loyal to Selena. And of course, he's worried that she is not going to accept him anymore because of all the horrible things that he has had to do in the king's name in order to stay where he was position-wise. And just, if there's one thing I want at the end of the series as a whole is for those two to reunite because there's a flashback in this book with them being kids and they, I, they were just so adorable and it just made my heart melt. So Kale is trying to help Adian where he can to try and get information where he can and him and Dorian have just kind of drifted because Dorian's kind of pissed that he had the nerve to suggest this idea to send Selena off to Wendelin. So, so poor Dorian's just kind of on his own when all this is going on. And then we have another new character. I'm gonna probably butcher her name. Sorsha. I had mixed feelings with her. Like, it was nice Dorian had someone to talk to through all this. But, uh, I'm iffy with the romance. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. Maybe if... You know, there's a little more time I could have grown to like it or hate it. I didn't see her being a spy, though. I didn't see that one coming. And I was shocked when she was killed at the end. Like, I don't know, I felt that she would live at least a little longer. So I was shocked that she had died. But Selena, she is in Wendelin, and she is just a mess. She's full of self-loathing, and she's... She's a real mess, and I had mixed feelings with that. One, I felt pity, because, you know, this big badass character that we met in the last two books is just reduced to this. And at the same time, I did understand, because she's been through a lot. Uh, I did like how she did slowly get over it. It didn't, wasn't instantaneous. It wasn't like she just had a good little pep speech and then, boom, she's back on her feet. It took a lot of time. And with the help of Rowan, who is a fae, who was sent by Mav, to bring her back to this little stronghold and train her to use her magic and grow more accustomed to her face side. I did like how she did accept her face side more. It took a while, like I said, it wasn't instantaneous, which I liked, but near the end, at the end, she was more comfortable. She accepted it and she is. She learned how to use her fire more, and she is going to kick more ass than ever. And I love, like, the BFF vibes going between her and Rowan. It took a while for that to form, and I love how it wasn't a romance. They are, like, they're just bros. They're BFFs. They're biffles. <laughs> they are, like, my bro favorite bro TP of the series so far. I, I especially love how Selena manages to break Rowan from his blood oath to Mav, and then they become. Then he just immediately swears a blood oath to her. So Selena is going back to try and figure out what to do with the king. She did find out where what the last wild key is, and it is this amulet that her mom gave her when she was eight years old. And you know who has it? The King of Assassins who trained her, he stole it from her when he found her, you know, half dead on a riverbank. So she, she's gonna get that thing back. I, I don't like Araman. I, is that how you pronounce his name? I don't, I don't know. So, you know, I would be perfectly happy if Selena just goes and kills him. I do not like him. He is an asshole. And I frankly would probably cheer if she kills him by the end of the series. So she's gonna get that try and have one of the keys out of the king's hands and we'll see where she goes from there. You know, the king finds out that Dorian has magic. Like Sosha, Adian, Kale, and Dorian. He has them all in one room. He knows there's a spy in his mist. It's Sosha. So he's... So, so, yeah. What's her face? Has her killed. In this chaos, Adian has been outed as... A rebel, he is locked away, 
and Kale gets away into the rest of the rebels, and I'm so glad that he has picked a side already, and he is siding against the king. And Dorian, Dorian, oh my God, the king fitted him with this collar, so now Dorian is gonna be totally under his control. So Chance the Good Selena and everyone are gonna have to fight him, and I'm so afraid that he is gonna get killed in this process. Like. I don't want Dorian to die. Like, I don't know who I want Selena to end up with romantically. I'm kind of up in the air as of now. But that doesn't mean I want either Kayla or Dorian to die. So I'm really afraid to see what happens with Dorian in the next book. And guys, just so much is going on. And there's, what, two or three books left? The fact that all this awesome stuff and suspense and stuff is happening in this book... I don't think my heart can take the next books. Oh my god. But I'm gonna read them anyway. So, I'm excited. And this book was just amazing. So, that will be it for this book review. And I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading, my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.